Hello and welcome to Field Trip. We just finished our pink color marathon at Audrey's house and now it's time to switch gears and meet with Keith. He recently purchased a property just outside of downtown Raleigh. We call it Project Fringe. He's coming over to Bungalow headquarters for a meeting to talk about concept for his new investment property. And then we're gonna head to the project site to take a look. <laughs> killed it. You totally killed it. Keith is coming at 4.15. Oh. It is 3.47. How is it 4? It's at 4.15 now. Mitch has no grasp on the passage of time. I don't think we'll be at my house by 4 o'clock. So it's a good thing that it got changed. I'm the timekeeper. He would not make a good timekeeper. This is like the prettiest day ever. It really is. This is a perfect day to go test drive convertibles. You back on the convertible train? <laughs> totally. Ah! <laughs> Nancy test drives convertibles. I think it's a good little mini series I could start. Yeah. We're calling Nancy's mini series Huge Nancy. <laughs> The Huge Nancy mini-series. That's perfect. <laughs> That's brilliant. <laughs> Nancy and I went to the Women's March this weekend with another na lady named Nancy, who's very small. Uh, She's uh. petite. <laughs> She's short. Right. Oh, sorry. She's small in stature. Petite. That's the right word for women. When you talk about women's size, you have to be very careful. We use words like petite or huge. <laughs> <laughs> Nancy's the huge one. <laughs> <laughs> huge Nancy's miniseries. It is perfect. <laughs> so huge. I, by contrast, become huge. I have no idea what she just said. I, by contrast, become huge. Keith! Keith is a mover and a shaker. He knows how to make things happen. Yeah, let me finish up this meeting. I just wanted to and I'll call you back so I get done here. Also, Keith is hilarious. How you doing? Deal with issues. <laughs> Trying to sell a house and there's a $75,000 bond on the house. What? I bought a house a really good deal, $150,000 house. I yeah. I like 20 grand for it. It was like a real good deal. Yeah. And there was a title issue. Grandma went bust, bankrupt. I bought it from grandma. She bailed out her granddaughter's boyfriend. Dud him out of jail. Well, I don't go to jail, so I don't know all the procedures. A lot of drama. I'm like, but I just want to get my house sold so I can get yeah, you did. paid. He's been working in real estate businesses for a while, but he's never done a renovation of this scale. We are taking a house that is less than 600 square feet, and it's going to be 2,800 square feet. Yeah, I was trying to figure out this design. Um, so the first design, there's no, it, it can't work. Is that what the deal is? You have to, because the roof lines have a problem. It's because the city has so many um, restrictions about how high the sidewalls can be. And if you go beyond a certain height on the sidewalls, you have to limit the depth. A lot of equations that factor in with each other. So now with the first design, there's a way we can modify it to get it to fit. So this is the original house, yeah. um, which I kind of just threw a rooftop uh, on top. To be clear, that is not the original house. That's the original design that I came up with for this property. We've worked through the interior first, and now it's time to figure out the exterior to go with it. Before we go back to the meeting, I'm gonna show you some of the design iterations that have taken us from that original design to the design that we're pitching today. These first three incorporate a higher pitched roof that surrounds the rooftop deck. And these next three have a reverse shed roof line with a more open effect. This is your highest and best use, I think, of the property. The question is just uh, the state of the market and can it bear um, the so additional cost. This is a hot area in Raleigh. The property values have recently risen quite a bit to the point that the land can hold the value of a larger home. In the front, the T would be like a, is that where the stairs go in the very front of the house? You mean this guy? Yeah. That's just a dormer to add visual interest because without it, it looks kind of block like. I can show you real quick kind of what it would look like without it. All right, designing on the fly. That's without, to give you an idea of what it looks like. And then if shingle I... Roof, metal roof? Metal roof would be ideal, but I think it would work with a shingle roof. Yeah. Don't you think, Nancy? Oh, yeah, I do. 
I think it's more important to have that rooftop deck and save money on the roof than it is to have a metal roof. It'll look like this on the back. Then we're just going to add that rooftop deck on top. Which will make, and there's another balcony right there? Let's see there. Yeah, the other balcony is off the master, just like this one. Cool. Yeah, let's go with that. I mean, Sweet. We'll make it. Um, whatever you think's better on the top, realistic or money wise. That's the thing the builder said. We might get into it. You have to trim some stuff to make it work with the budget. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Good Thanks to see so you. Great to see you. Thank you so much. Now I'm going to show you the iterations that happened after the meeting, starting with the one you just saw. These next four show different configurations for the roof line, incorporating that open concept rooftop deck. And here's the final design. You can see how the front of the house keeps a touch of that original 1920s bungalow effect, but toward the rear it really opens up, embraces glass, and has an ideal westward view of the city and sunset. So now we're gonna go to the job site at sunset and check out that view to make sure we're on track for the rooftop deck. All right, this is a fun day. Yeah, right? <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Okay, so last time we were at the house, there were columns here and along here. There was a reverse gable on top of the front door, there was a roof. There were a lot more things. Remember what it looked like before? Very different. I can't remember the combination, so we're going in the back. Ah, oh, so much fun. And last time I was here, there was also a back half of the house as big as the current front house. It was twice as big. And I told him to knock it off, so it is gone. There's Nancy standing in the part that got knocked off, and here's me today standing on the part that remains. There are so few places in Raleigh where you can see the sunset, but from this spot you can see the downtown skyline and the sunset, which is why we are going to go with a rooftop deck. I used to drive these in high school, <laughs> back in the city of Minneapolis. You know, that was my day job. This is what we call a huge digger thing. <laughs> Usually people don't cross their legs when they're in one of those. <laughs> oh, I don't know. I mean, it's sort of like the choice between riding side saddle and cowboy style. <laughs> Here she is, folks. Huge backhoe Nancy riding side saddle. That's me. Downtown Aww. Raleigh. It's nothing. <laughs> it's just nothing. When I hired Nancy, I didn't even know she had all of this experience. Yeah, and over here we've got the shifter deal. <laughs> oh, and over here we have more of them. Yeah. Don't touch it. It's really, really sensitive equipment. Please don't touch it. This is Huge Nancy's mini series. This is Huge Nancy's mini series on big equipment. Oh, and I have a fire extinguisher in case it gets too hot up in here. <laughs> Some previous property owner put in this false ceiling, dropped from the original ceiling, so they didn't have to heat as many cubic feet of airspace. So this beautiful house that had like a 10-foot ceiling suddenly had an 8-foot ceiling to save a few bucks on HVAC. <laughs> this is such a horribly built house. When I first saw it, I thought we were going to be able to save tons of it, but as we dug into the layers, they were like, look at this, look at this foundation. Like, this is Stonehenge right down here, holding up the house. Stonehenge. And this is one of the best Stonehenge foundation pillars. There were others that are like teetering sideways with like a little rock. See, look, you literally have a rock on top of a rock holding up a house. So that's why we had to rebuild a lot. We don't know if we can improve it, but we're gonna try really hard. We're gonna try really hard. I figure a coat of paint on the outside. Yeah. That was my huge idea. Thank you. That sounds like an HGTV show. <laughs> Rubble to palace. <laughs> Rubble to palace. <laughs> We're going to turn this brick into your dream home. We're going to turn your house into a rubble palace. <laughs> All right. We're gonna get this here bobcat working. Let me crank her up. 
Can you lift me up here on this here thing? Oh, yeah. This here snowplow thing? Oh yeah, I can lift can you up. Can you hoist me to the stars? Yeah. I just have to push one of these levers. <laughs> it's a lever, that's what it's called. <laughs> We've lost the keys to Mitch's furious bobcat. <laughs> and I'm furious bobcat Mitch. <laughs> that's perfect. Also riding side saddle. Yes, well, as started. it was a huge idea started by me. Oh, that's so, true. if you look back, that's my handiwork with the backhoe. I tore the house off, <laughs> and now we're gonna paint. Yeah. <laughs> it's looking better already. Ugh, this feels so much lighter you because know, of it. just slap a new piece of granite in this, coat oh, of paint, can. good. All right. Woo. So, when I first looked at the house, I was really confused as to why this corner was sinking because typically here by the main structural members, this is called a girder. Here, I think this is a girder. It looks like yeah, a girder. This is a girder. Typically the girders are the most supported and you would support a girder right here, which is where it is supported, but it's supported by another, oh, this is the first one, but it's supported by Stonehenge instead of supported by bricks with footings, even though that nothing on this house has footings. A footing supports the foundation of a house so that it doesn't settle or sink into the ground. Around here it's typically concrete poured into a hole or a trench that's been dug, and it typically has a larger surface area than the structural member it's supporting. Think of me like a footing. If I lay down on the ground, and you stood on top of me, you probably wouldn't sink into the ground at all. But if instead you put all of your weight on one toe, you probably would make an indention in the ground. Well, this house built in the 1920s doesn't have them. It was built on piers, almost like columns sticking into the ground. And then around the exterior, there is a brick wall, but it's only a curtain wall, meaning it's not structural. It just fills in the space between those piers. So the reason that the floor system was all sloping toward a place it should have had support was that the support is horrible. There you go. Oh yeah. Woo. Yeah. <laughs> I made it. I made it. Hand me that camera. Check out this view. So good. And that's only from the second story of the future house. The third story with the rooftop deck will have an even clearer view of the sunset and the city. Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Done. I'm so glad we came at sunset. Yes, me too. Perfect. All right, we're gonna hit it. You lock up, Zach? Great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thanks for joining our field trip. Come along next week for an initial consultation with a young couple, one of whom grew up in the home. It's a major renovation and we call it Home Again.